role the music plays is, uh, I think, an intrinsic one, and probably with Bioshock more than any game we've ever worked on. And Jim and I have a, um, a great relationship from my perspective, because I come in his office and I tell him like really vague things about like what I want, and I play like some songs for him and some videos. I'm like, now go like make something great out of that. And then Jim does. You know, like on, on Infinite, I said to him I wanted to do um, modern songs, but in a period style. And then I like left his office, <laughs> and, and he basically had to take it from there. Yeah, well, it was for the for those those songs to do a, a modern style was just to to honor what those songs were and figure out what would work well in that in that older style and um, you got to find all the people find the right people the that could pull it off. Yeah, just it honor work. it. Yeah, this is no time to hide your light under a bushel. <laughs> like, these people want to know. Well, I mean, it, it takes a long time to to find the right people and and combine everything in the right situation. Um, and it's a lot of um, kissing a lot of frogs to meet that prince. You know, I mean, a lot of things get thrown out and tried again and you know we just keep passing it by Ken and seeing what works and what doesn't. We talk about like a, a style like for instance God Only Knows we had the Beach Boys song and um, I remember seeing a scene from um, The Music Man where there's a barbershop quartet so we watched that scene from The Music Man where they do a different song and obviously do God Only Knows. Then we had to find a group who can do that arrangement and for all we knew the arrangement wouldn't work and Jim was really good at saying there were certain songs, and I think that would work in the style, or I wouldn't, like we had a lot of songs we wanted to do that, for instance, were so dependent upon like a modern percussion sound that there's no way that would have worked. Like the thing it's known for is a percussion, you know, a modern kind of percussion sound. But um, God Only Knows really tr transferred well. I mean, how, were, you, were you confident that one would work from the very beginning when we talked about Barbershop? Yeah, I mean, that was your idea. And I think the, the trick was just to find a a, a ranger that could honor, really knew the style. I mean, we could have gotten a, a studio musician and, yeah. and done it that way, but to find someone that was really entrenched in that style and really dedicated to it, and then they just bring all this integrity. Oh, life would still go on, believe me. The world could show nothing to me. So, so what good would living do me? What I'd be without you. And some stuff was easier, like when you get into like blues, for instance, like so much of modern rock comes right out of that. So once you have like somebody like the um, the Creedence song, mm -hmm. Fortune um, Song. I mean, it was, I said it was easier. I didn't have to go find the person <laughs> and make it happen. I mean, right. What was it? What was? Well, that was all that? about just finding the right person to put it over. It was Jesse Carolina, who's an amazing, amazing singer, and it was you know she does one take, and you're like, that was brilliant. Maybe we do one more just in case. Check her out on YouTube. She's awesome. Like there's one video you showed me of her like singing like by a fountain or something yeah, yeah, yeah. with yeah, um, I mean, like playing a washboard. It mm -hmm. was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Carolina and the hot mess. Um, that was really cool. But then we got to sort of look at all the areas of the game, and Jim would usually come up with like like five or six or seven ideas for it, and we'd sort of he'd mix it in, he'd actually get the song and mix it into this a video of the scene and then we'd go over and talk about it. Lots of like, I'd be home and midnight downloading FTPs of videos and I'd be, we'd be riding back and forth at like two in the morning. Um, but that to me, I, I mean, that may drive you, I, I really enjoy it. That's one of my highlights of, yeah, of, of yeah, the yeah. process for me. Cause yeah. well, I don't really have to do very much. <laughs> well, it's also the only way for us really to be able to show it off and test it yeah. and see what it's like. So put it in the world, have you take a look at it and see what you feel, how it feels. The question usually is, are you supporting the scene or are you playing against the scene? And sometimes playing against the scene can be a good thing. Um, like we had a f song in the first um, game during a very dark and violent sequence. We did a Patty Page song. Patty Page? How much is that dog in the window? Is that Patty Page? Or Doris Day? It's Patty Page. Um, and it's really up and goofy, and but it was against a very violent scene and Jordan chose to do um, the uh, was it, was it Tchaikovsky? What was the... Uh, yeah, the Marshall, Lots of the Marshall, Marshall Flowers. Flowers. Yeah, which was totally against what the action, but it worked really great. And sometimes, you know, you have a piece that fits right in, like Django Reinhardt's in there, uh, that fit right in. Um, and then some new pieces here in the new one. Um, you know, Jim found a great Johnny Mathis song for the beginning of it, which when you first walk into Rapture, which was just really set the mood and set the vibe. Um, 
And then, you know, we, we, we got a bunch of other songs. I'm just looking at the list here. You know, some Mel Treme and some, uh, there's a Patsy Cline song I really wanted to put in because it was, it's the most depressing song in <laughs> history. Um, called She's Got You. And um, that one I really wanted and we got that one. Um, so I'm excited for the soundtrack. The songs, I, I, the songs mostly I, listen, I would listen to all the time. I do listen to all the time. I didn't want to just to sort of remind you that shit's going down. Um, I wanted it to be to, to be able to comment on the action in the world and make it make it be a character because Rapture was a character, Columbia was a character, and when you you know the moment in, in Columbia where you breach the clouds and you first see it, and Jim has a piano in his office that is really off key, and we almost got it tuned. <laughs> and it's good you didn't, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. per- that if you listen to it, it's is that is that um is that will the circle? What, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's you find will the circle be unbroken? But in probably you know, you know, it's substantially out of tune. Yeah. Um, but it gives this sort of old time feeling and this sort of beautiful sort of quiet feeling that when you pierce the clouds after all that noise of the rocket that just worked really well, and I always knew I wanted per- period songs for Rapture. Um, but I didn't realize how badly the score would be necessary. And in, the, in an Infinite, the idea to do the alternative versions of the songs came along pretty early, actually. And I think it took a big leap of faith on Jim's part to sort of like go with that and give that a shot because it was a pretty weird idea. It could have just sounded really bad. And some songs we did just, just, didn't, just didn't really work. Yeah. You know, we tried some, yeah. not every song is made for that. Um, but so we chose the ones that we thought did. I think the soundtrack is, is, is intrinsic to the game. And I don't know if every game I ever work on would have a soundtrack, but Bioshock is really tied to music. Really, it's very, it's, I mean, it's very tied to our, it's very tied to, it's really tied to artistic movements of the 20th century, and the, you know, in the late 19th, and the late 19th century, the whole franchise is. And without, it's tied to the, you know, the architectural movements, it's tied to the political movements, it's tied to the social movements. And to leave out music from that would be, I think, a real loss. And Gary's, even Gary's score is very informed by the music of those periods as well, even though he's creating something new.